Hello and welcome to Infinity. We're going to have a look now at the blend mode known as Linear Burn. So, as a reminder of that uh, the blend mode, how it works, that you have a base layer uh, and a blend layer on top of that. And then there's a formula associated with the blend layer, which the the blend mode, in this case Linear Burn, and that combines these, the blend and base layer, into the result layer which you actually see. The linear burn is in the darkened group of blend modes. We've covered darken, multiply and color burn. Now we're going to look more at linear burn. The basic calculation for it is for each pixel and for each channel within that pixel, the red, green and blue, you add together the base and the blend and then you subtract one from it. I'm going to look at the calculation in more detail in another video. So now, for now, let's have a look at how it works in practice. So if we take a picture like this and hit Control J to duplicate it, and then if we go to the blend modes here and look down at the darken group, when you go to darken, nothing happens. Go to multiply, it darkens the picture. When you go to color burn, you get very significant darkening of shadows. You also, as you can see in the sky there, the colors get more intense as well. However, also the whites are preserved. In the linear burn, you can see it's not as colorful as the color burn, but the shadows are significantly darker as well. There's a lot of similarity, but there is difference. And it's, that's the difference that when you're deciding which is which, you might want to think about. The whites are preserved here because both the top and the bottom layer have the same image and so it's got the same white. So when the whites combine, you get white. But if you put in another layer, you would get a different effect altogether. Let's try that. Let's put a layer on top of this. So I'll go to layer, new fill layer. And we'll put that at a sort of mid gray. And then we'll see what happens when we go to the darken that uh, effectively darkens things based on the top layer. Multiply. Now you just got a, a more sensible picture, but it's actually darkening. Go to color burn. I've got this darkening now, but the whites are preserved. But watch when we go, happens when we go to the linear burn. See, it's darkened the whole picture, including the whites. And so we have to be aware of that is that what's in the top layer, the blend layer, can affect how light the picture is all over, including the whites. OK, let's just go back to the slides rear on here and say key points. Key points about linear burn then, it's similar to color burn, but it's overall it's darker. There's less contrast, less color. White is not protected and darks create even more darks. You're going to get, if you want a more flatter uh, darkening, then this is what you'll get. Uh, overall, the black is still transparent, so blacks in the top layer will effectively not change the bottom layer. And progressive linear darkening as opposed to the non-linear of the color burn. And they are commutative, which means they're swappable, which means you could swap layers and you get the same effect. Typical uses. Um, darkening shadows, you can use it to deepen colors as well or to just dark Damp, damp down colors, uh, make them darker, deeper burning, as in dodging and burning, and things like putting in texture. So overall, that's it. That's a quick introduction to the linear burn. Uh, I'm going to do in the next video, I'm going to do the calculations. I'm going to do another one with a number of different ways that you can use linear burn. Until then, thank you very much for watching.